Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews, and the supermoon is upon us. Well, hopefully not exactly upon us. That, that science fiction story didn't end too well. But today you can go out and see the supermoon, and for the next couple days, the supermoon is basically when there's a full moon that happens to coincide with when the moon, in its orbit around the Earth, happens to be closest to the Earth. Since the moon doesn't go in a perfect circle around the Earth, that happens every so often. And right now, today, is when the moon is actually closest to the Earth in all of 2013. So you may be wondering, what do you need to fully take advantage of this super moon opportunity? Do you need to go out and buy a telescope? Do you need a pair of astronomical binoculars? Actually, the best thing to see it with, you already have with you. The super moon, in comparison to a regular full moon, will appear about 12% larger and about 30% brighter. So it is worth going outside to take a look at, especially if you see it when it just comes up over the horizon where there's that magnification effect of looking through all the layers of the atmosphere and the moon tends to look bigger anyway, it's gonna look much bigger. But it turns out that a full moon is usually the worst time to try to look at the moon with a telescope. It's so bright that it's, it's actually blinding when you're out at night and you turn your telescope to the moon, it's, it, you, you see spots afterwards. Now you can get a moon filter for your telescope, but if you're going to reduce the amount of brightness anyway, why do you care that it's 30% brighter? The best time to observe the moon with the telescope is maybe around the uh, first quarter, the crescent, something like that, where you can see right along the edge between the lighted part and the dark part, that's when you can really, there's a lot of uh, contrast right there and you can actually see the mountains and the depths of the craters and it's very nice to look at with the telescope but this super moon really isn't the opportunity to take your telescope out and get a great view of the moon. Now binoculars are better because they won't fill the entire field of view with the moon but you just lose the the comparison. What makes a super moon appear super is comparing it to how it looks regularly and you're used to seeing the moon come up over the house across the street with the trees and the tower and the power lines and so it's in comparison to that, that I think you'll really appreciate the, the size and brightness of the supermoon, not looking at it magnified with the telescope or binoculars. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be thinking about buying a telescope or binoculars because in just a few months, in August, they're predicting, we'll start to be able to see the comet Ison. This is supposed to be the comet of the century, sort of like Halley's Comet was in the late 1800s. It, everybody who saw it remembered that. It was huge in the sky. It had a tail that went across a third of the sky. You couldn't miss it, and everybody in the world saw it. We don't really know too much about Comet Ison. We're thinking this is going to be its first pass by the sun, that it's been floating out in a cloud outside of the solar system of of chunks of ice and rock that uh, most comets seem to come from and every so often two of them and they're floating around bump into each other one of them gets knocked a little bit towards the sun and as it gets closer it's got more gravity pulling and so it ends up falling towards the sun we get to see the show of a comet so they're not sure how this one will turn out but early indicators are it's going to be a once in a lifetime show so you want to be prepared for that and again starting in August you'll be able to I mean it'll be a little spec that you'll be able to see with a small telescope, but by the time it gets to December, they're predicting, if things don't go awry with it, that it will be so bright you may be able to see it in the daytime, and that the tail of it, just like Halley's Comet, may go across like a third of the sky, something you'll remember for the rest of your life. Now with major comets, I think a lot of their charm and beauty comes from actually seeing them just with your own eye, to see that majestic sight in the sky while you're standing in your neighborhood and you've got the silhouette of the houses and the trees and parts of your daily life all around you and you see this magnificent thing in the sky that's a big part of that sense of grandeur that you'll feel but it's also interesting to look at with a small telescope or binoculars I think the binoculars more so because you can see I mean you're not going to see any detail on the, the head of the comet you're not going to see like in the movies a big tumbling rock with jets of things coming out you'll just see a, a fuzzy spot but with the binoculars you'll see the fuzzy spot with some of the tail and you can see it perhaps with other things in the sky when it passes by a particular constellation planet in the same field of view. I think that'd be really interesting. With a telescope, you'll be able to really zoom in right on that fuzzy spot at the front, but it's still just going to be a fuzzy spot. So at least for viewing this comet of the century that's coming, you don't have to break the bank and go out and spend $500 on a nice small telescope. A pair of astronomical binoculars, these are the kind that have very big lenses at the end to pull in all that light and let you see things real well. You can get these for around $60. I like these Celestron Skymaster. They have a series of these with um, 
bigger lenses than this if you really want to go for some heavy binoculars. These are about three pounds and I think they're about the heaviest I'd want to hold for any length of time without my arms start shaking from holding up the weight. But uh, they're 15 by 70 and they give good magnification and bring in plenty of light and they're only about $60. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to check them out but I think you'll definitely want to have a pair of these before the Comet of the Century, Comet Ison arrives. And just every other month or so, there's something interesting to see in the sky. If you watch the newspaper, they'll usually mention it, or the weather person in your area usually brings those things up, that tomorrow night we're going to see this or that. And a lot of them you can really appreciate with an inexpensive pair of astro binoculars. But as for the supermoon, these are all you need.